Ratios. A ratio is a comparison between two quantities by division, and ratios look a lot like fractions, and some of the same rules apply. There are three different ways of representing a ratio, and they're listed here. This all means the same thing, 3 to 5. It's kind of a verbal way of writing it. This is 3 colon 5, and that just means 3 to 5 as well. And this means 3 to 5 also, 3 over 5, just like 3 fifths. To write a ratio as a decimal, all you do is you divide the top number by the bottom number, and then you're set. Now, some of the same rules apply as with fractions, but problems generally do not call for addition or subtraction to be done with them, so don't worry about things like common denominators or stuff like that very often. Uh, writing an equal ratio is similar to simplifying fractions, though. Uh, so if we look here, write each ratio in three ways, comparing the first quantity with the second. If we were to say 13 out of 25 baseball hands in Chicago are Cubs fans, all I would say is, well, hey, you know what? The first way we'd write that, I want to change my color here. First way we'd write that is to go ahead and say 13 to 25. Another way of writing it, 13, 25. And the final way, 13, 25. Pretty easy. So now if we look here, express each ratio as a decimal. All we're going to do is, just like you do with uh, simplifying a fraction, you divide the top number by the bottom number. So in this case here, 4 is divided by 10. So how many times does 10 go into 4? It goes in, 10 does not go into 4, so it goes in 0 times. And then we go, 10 goes into, well, 4 up here. That's equal to, now, remember I, I added, I annexed a 0 over here, isn't this? So we're left with 0. So it's 0.4 is the ratio as a decimal. 0 0.4. I always like to put the 0 in front. Just I think that makes it more clear. 10 divided by, or 10 to 2, and that's just going to be, well, how many times is 2 going to 10? All right. That one's easy. 5. So if we want to represent this as a decimal, 5 or 5.0 if you want to write it out as a decimal. Um, and again, one of the important things about ratios and rates when we get to them later is that you can actually have them represented as a decimal. And so that's an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, and we'll get to what unit rates and things like that mean in, in the next lesson. So here, if you find two ratios, uh, if it says here, find two ratios, equal to each ratio. Um, and if you look at 3 fourths, if I want to change this, all I have to do is do what I would do to um, a, a fraction, just multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. So here if I want to multiply the top and the bottom by 2, I have 6 over 8. Or if I want to multiply the bottom and top by 2 or, or by 10 instead, I have 30 over 40. There, great. Over here, same thing. If I wanted to multiply the top and bottom by 2, 20 over 24. I just like to do 2 and 10 because I think those are the easiest ones to do. Multiply the top and bottom by 10 over 120. There we go. Uh, now here, if we were writing Write each ratio in its simplest form. That is extremely similar to simplifying fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out which goes in the top and the bottom here. Well, right off the bat, we should know, again, most important ones to know are 2, 3, and 5. And so, well, we know 5 doesn't go in here. 3 goes in here because 3 plus 6 equals 9. But 3 does not go into here because, remember, 9 is divisible by 3 and therefore 3 goes into it, 4 plus 0 is 4, and 3 doesn't go into that, so that's not divisible by that. But it is even, so we know we can divide the top and the bottom by 2, and when we divide the top and the bottom, top by 2, we get 18. When we divide the bottom by 2, we get 20. Then we look at it again, and we say to ourselves, well, it's still not 3, still not 5, let's do 2 again. 9 over 10. 
And there, we're done. Now this one over here is a little bit trickier. Well, it's a little bit of a trick question because all we have to do is figure out, well, is there anything that goes into the top and into the bottom? If you remember, you might not realize this, but uh, try and think of what goes into 17. The only numbers that go into 17 are 1 and 17 because 17 is a prime number. Now, 1 goes into 20 because every, 20, uh, everything, uh, 1 goes into everything. 17 goes, doesn't go into there, so this is actually in its simplest form. So it's a little bit of a trick question there. So again, it's just like simplifying fractions though.